If you're a beginner violinist, you're probably struggling with a bouncy, shaky bow. And in today's video, we're gonna be addressing just that, how to reduce the amount of bounciness or the shakiness of the bow when you do a down bow and an up bow. Stick around to the end of the video. If we're meeting for the first time, my name is Eric, I'm a violinist. I do violin tutorials and how-to tips. If you haven't done so already, please make sure to hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification, so that way you get notified for when your videos come out. This is every single beginner violinist's problem. I would even argue that this is every string player's problem. To have a bouncy bow is what we don't want when we're starting. You know, eventually there's a bow stroke called spiccato, where you literally lift the bow off the string, but we're not going to address that today because spiccato is a controlled bow stroke. What we do want to talk about and what we want to address today is having a consistent sound, no bouncing, no shaking of the bow. Let's talk about the bow hold for just a moment because the shakiness of the bow and the bouncing of the bow happens with the tension of the right hand. So when I bring my hand over here, my bow hold, I would practice holding the bow vertically because that allows our hand, sorry, I bumped into the microphone, th that allows our hand to relax. If we're, hold if we're trying to practice the bow hold horizontally, we're trying to carry the weight of the entire bow on this hand. And normally we have the violin resting on the string, so that's where we could also adjust. But let's start vertically for a moment. And I want you to hold your bow. You might be starting out with the, with the thumb on the bottom on the, on the silver plate right over here. That is completely normal. If you're starting out this way, that's okay. But if you're one of the violinists that wants to go in between the hair and the stick right over here, that's okay too. So just for the sake of the video, I'm going to be addressing the thumb inside the bow here. And once you have established a good bow hold, everyone, I want you to relax that right hand. That right hand is key to addressing the shakiness of the bow because you're technically not holding the bow. It is a called a bow hold or a bow grip, but if you really think about it, the bow lays and rests on the string and I can relax my fingers over here. A common issue is pressing down on that pinky and assuming that all fingers need to be pressing or squeezing on the bow. That's not the case at all. We want the pinky to be slightly gentle. We wanna tap that pinky and all the fingers have contact with the bow. Not necessarily gripping or squeezing or tensing, not none of, none of those words, but we want to relax as much as possible without sacrificing the bow hold. So for me, I am you know, letting that index finger be a cushion. I'm letting that pinky be nice and soft. And then if I can relax these knuckles here, so that way I have a nice straight hand, that is what we want ideally. We do not want this because we're adding extra force down over here. And then you'll notice on the side, I'm gonna probably put my microphone over here and my camera over here so you can see if I do a very aggressive bow, you notice that around, closer to the middle bow, around over here, that is where the shakiness really starts because that is where the balance point of the bow is. If I were to put a finger right over here, I, the bow would perfectly balance. And I encourage you to try that to see where that balance point is. That is where the most bounce occurs on the violin bow. So when, if I'm pressing down here, the stick will shake, the sound may shake also because of the inconsistency with the bow hair, but you might encounter like that kind of, that kind of shakiness of the bow. It, it, it happens because of that unequal distribution of weight and, um, and pulling of the bow. We never wanna press down this way. We never wanna press down this way because look what happens with my knuckles. My knuckles are above and my, wrist is above and people play this way and all good for them and all power to them. But for a beginner violinist who is struggling with a shaky bow, my recommendation is to get all these fingers curvy. Now I'm doing it because I've been playing the violin for over, you know, 25 years, right? So this is a lot easier for me to do, but relaxing that left hand is the key. So if you want to like dangle your hand this way and let the bow come to the hand, not let the hand come to the bow because if the bow comes to the hand, it'll come to its natural 
shape of the hand. If I'm going, I'm grabbing. And I see this a lot in adult beginners and young beginners. The bow should come to the hand as naturally as possible and all the fingers here are going to relax as best as possible. And again, if you're one of the beginners that your teacher wants your thumb down here on the plate, that's perfectly normal. I've seen that, I teach that as well. But again, if you want that thumb, we want it to be touching um, in between the hair and the stick. There's a thumb leather. That second finger is touching the thumb. And that third finger, we call this the eye. We want that third finger covering the eye and then this index finger touching the thumb leather on this side and the pinky does very minimal work. It just taps right there. And then once we have this violin bow hold ready, now don't press or don't squeeze. We're just simply going to guide the bow right to left. And then back again. One more time. As you can see, we do not want this, we want this. Another problem that I see amongst beginners is that the wrist tends to collapse down this way. This is another way for you to actually shake your bow because there, there is no equal distribution of the bow hair. And then you're gonna get that really scratchy sound because the bow is not perpendicular to the string. And a lot of people and a lot of beginners who end up doing this end up having a runner's arm. Now my recommendation is that you want that thumb to be touching the bow hair also. You don't wanna be pushing out this way because you don't wanna be twisting the stick at all. So if you're able to touch the bow hair with the very top of your thumb, then you will naturally get a better bow grip and the stick will be slightly away from you. That is okay. Some teachers want to have the student have flat hair. That's okay too. That's completely normal. Let us recap what we just learned. So to avoid a shaky bow, we want to fix the right hand, the bow hold. So we want to avoid this because we're also, that first finger is also the fish hook over here. We don't want a fish hook because we're overextending. The knuckles are literally above the stick. The knuckles are not directly over the stick, but kind of to the side here. And once we get that established, adjust your bow hold, see if you can relax that, um, that wrist and those knuckles so we can really relax these fingers. And then once we have that, all we have to do is guide the bow right and left. We don't have to do anything fancy. You know, don't press, don't squeeze, don't uh, tighten things up on the bow. Let the bow kind of do its work. The bow is heavy enough, your arm is heavy enough to make a sound, I guarantee you. Thanks for watching. I hope this video on reducing a bouncy bow helped you become a better violinist. I hope these quick tips will help you in the practice room. And again, if you like this video, please hit the like button so that way more people like you can have access to this video on YouTube. And if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe hit the bell notification so that way you get notified for when new videos come out. It helps me out as a violin content creator to provide more videos for you. Also, if you haven't checked out some recent videos of mine on the channel, I'm gonna leave some videos right over here and right over here for you to take a look at. Thanks so much and I'll see you in the next video.